Uh, this particular list is coming to us from user in the chat, Spexis. And this is, uh, this ain't your grandma's bard class deck. This is a little bit different than traditional, like, combo focused bard class decks that usually feature Bergy, Mox Amber, some more one drops. This is, the best way I can describe this is bard class mid range. So we're playing bard class, but we don't actually have a combo. There's no Bergies, there's no Mox Ambers, there's no Xenagoses. So the concept here is bard class. All of the red-green two drops that you can cast for free once you've activated Bard Class, and then just like a beatdown plan. So you have like Goral Goral to give all your stuff haste. You have chariots and Miglosses just as good threats. Uh, again, all of the two drops that you can cast for free off Bard Class, along with some Feldens for additional aggression. Um, and yeah, so I, I guess the theory is that you're not as reliant on Bard Class. Like you can just play a normal game of you. You can just kind of play a normal game of like you know, creatures up the curve. The problem is, you, there's no one bit of interaction, so there's no strangle, there's no fire, obviously you can't play fiery impulse, but like, no strangle. Uh, like, we have a couple of crater claws and a couple of abrades, but we don't really have a ton of interaction, so we're like, the curve isn't that great because we have no elves, so we can't go one into three, and the games, I'm, I'm worried about the games where we don't have bard class, we're going to be just casting like, a bunch of slightly under cards, like, you know, two mana two twos and and stuff like that so i don't know we'll see how it plays out i'm, I've, I'm definitely intrigued because i've never seen an approach to bard class like this before and it looks interesting but i have my doubts i definitely have my doubts what's up js catch a 320 train sounds good sounds good this looks non-functional i mean we don't we say that about every single donor deck like when we played the mill deck i'm sure that you probably said the same thing that it looks non-functional and that i won four matches with it so you know, <laughs> everything looks non-functional until we go for one. The reality is that Rakdos, which is arguably one of, if not the best decks in the format, has a better win rate on the draw than on the play. Like it's it's just factually a better deck than it when it's on the draw. But people love complaining about play draw win rates, and I just I just don't get it. I mean, maybe Rakdos is like the only exception. To be fair. Because a lot of the other decks are a little bit worse than the draw. Like, I won't disagree there. Like, green, for example. Green is, like, a perfect example. It's... <clears throat> no, I think it was, uh, I think it was Danny's tweet. Ooh, the vampires. Okay, bet. The vampires, huh? Yeah, second bard class, not exactly what we wanted here. Hmm... I guess we can go activate play McLaws. All right, one mana four four. By the way, it's kind of like a three mana four four. Encourage me to look that up. All right, let's look. Let's see if we can do some searching. Searching for Valident, and I think what I'm finding is not exactly what I want to be finding. So if you got a link, oh Patrick Wu, right, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, I saw that one. I saw that one. That was Patrick Rose to be, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, this one, right? We looked at this yesterday. My modern take. The One Ring is a great card, but not ban worthy, and the modern meta will adapt to it, as it did with Ragavan, Ren, Free Spells, Cascade. My pioneer take. A massive ban wave is necessary. Thoughtseize, Lotus Field, Nykthos, Andor Karn, Parhelion, and Fable. Uh, tell me you're a control player without telling me you're a control player. Double Stromkirk Condemned, huh? Hmm... So I can play this for one. Okay, let's cast this. Kind of wish I had one more red mana. So I could go Crater's Claws and... Uh, well, either both of these or just Goro Goro plus Crater's Claws. <clears throat> I think it's kind of pointless to kill one of these. Uh, let's just go to combat. Probably just going to kill the knight this turn. With a braid. Yeah, I'll just play this in pass. What does this do? Five mana, make a five five, activate if you control an attacking modified creature. Well, I have a modified creature. I no longer have a Gora Gora though. I had a modified creature. I guess I still do. I can play that for one, which I guess is fine. Maybe I can pump the Miglaws this turn. I can actually do Vigilance, Menace, and Pump, just to get in some damage. And then I could still block with it. 
Fatal push. Okay, so we'll pump this. They take seven. They go to eight. We have a five five, so we can just block these pretty freely. Also, like very close to dead to Crater's Claws, right? Could do it for five right now. Oh, well, they're actually just dead. <laughs> Thanks for the three life. <laughs> Thanks for the three life, buddy. Uh, all right, Gilly. Classic. How do I get the counters? It's from Bard class, right? Yeah, legendary creatures you control enter the battlefield with an additional plus one plus one counter on them. So Bard class not only reduces the cost of all your legendary spells, but it also makes it it makes them all enter the battlefield with an extra counter. Like this card is really good. You know, if you can build around it, it is a like it's not only a combo piece; it's a really good mid range tool as well. Assuming that your deck can support it, and uh, that's kind of what we're going for here. Card super powerful. Very, like, this might be the single most underutilized card in the entire format, in the entire Pioneer format, relative to how busted it is. Like, it's a busted card, but just nobody's played with it. Hmm. I don't really have any good sideboard cards here. I think I might just run it back. Yeah, I'm just going to run it back. I wonder if they have Galta. They didn't show us Soren, but we can probably assume that is part of the equation. All right, well, I mean, I don't know, Dark Glass again, we keep... Can't really mull hands with Bard Class. Yeah, temporary lockdown portable hole being answers to Bard Class that people like already want to play in their deck is kind of awkward. I do agree with that. The fact that there's like, you know, answers that people put into their deck that they're people already want to play those cards anyways. Uh oh. Chat Monka S right now. Okay, I can beat that. Maybe. It's not a Sorin. Okay, so we go here. Do I kill the Sorin or do I play Goro Goro? Probably should kill the Sorin. So we can cast these two for free. I have six in hand. I probably have to kill the Sorin. And pass. Yeah, speaking of busted card, here's a one-sided show and tell. I tried Galta Vampires with Thrillseeker. No, I've seen a couple of lists, though. My experience with Soren and Galta has only been... Like, I'd never played Thrillseeker in those decks because I thought it was just win more. Like, if you Soren a Galta into play, you don't really need the Thrillseeker to win the game. Like, you're just going to win with the Galta anyways. So I felt like it was not, I felt like it was not necessary. Yeah, that's fine because I have a second Galia. Okay. Dana blocks there. There's Soren's at five. Mm. Okay, so I can go Galia, Crater's Claws, the Knight. Yeah, X equals one, and then I guess play Goro Goro, because I think I'd rather have Goro Goro in play. And then I think I'm just gonna kill their Soren. Yeah, I think I like this. I guess I could have gone Felden instead of Goro Goro, attack Soren for five and them for four. Maybe that was a better line. Uh, looks appears to be just Rakdos. We haven't seen a blue card yet. It appears to just be a Rakdos deck from what, from what we've seen so far. Second Harvester. Okay. Um, that is not bad. I mean, I'm not going to do math. I'm just going to attack. <laughs> attack and make them figure it out uh, alright do this because all my stuff gets pumped they're going to trade for Galia they don't have a good trade here I guess they can block this but if they block with both harvesters I can just sack this deal them 8 and then trade the Hushar for both harvesters which I think is pretty good if they only block this I probably won't sack but if they block with both, then I will sack. We're doing some cool stuff. Bard class has felt pretty good this game. What's the uh, the third chapter is like you get to basically draw some cards. Legendary spell in the top two cards. Yeah, I play them this turn. Okay. Uh, damage happens. That's a lot of damage. They're at one? <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, they're at one. <laughs> it's not very many life. This deck needs Samut. Yeah, I wasn't sure if you had enough, like, enough haste stuff, but with Goro Goro, you probably do. Saving Galia to draw next turn. No, I don't. I want to keep the Hajar around. 
I mean, I'm just going to go to combat, right? Like, they are dead on board. I get a Targnar trigger, so, like, <clears throat> there's not really a lot of bad stuff that can happen to me. And I get to... Oh, no, I don't have the Gallian play anymore. Push and Lord. Well, if they Lord, they have to tap one of their creatures in order to also cast Fatal Push, right? They go, like, tap, tap, tap. But even if they have Push Lord, I can still, like, sack a Jard. It's not that bad for me. Um... Yeah, I guess that's fine. I'm kind of surprised they didn't push this. I guess I let that go. They can't Lord? No, they can. If They they can go discard Lord to Condemn, and then cast it off of Condemn and two colorless lands. So they still can cast the Lord. Okay, well, I'm just going to pass priority here. They have to discard to pump their vampires, right? Okay, so if I sacrifice this, they get to keep Harvester Champion. If I let damage happen, I lose everything and they keep Champion. Is that good? 3-3. Three, three. Hmm, this deck is actually not that great for me. Yeah, I th think I just have to let damage happen. Doesn't it get pumped? Oh, right. That's a good point. Oh, true. I forgot that Hajar pumped. I thought it only gave Indestructible. Okay, yeah, this is way better then. I forgot that it pumped. I thought it only gave Indestructible. You're right. I should read my cards. I, I, I forgot about that. I thought it was only Indestructible. Would help if I read the cards. I know, imagine reading. They're attacking? Huh? What the Christ? They draw, like, Extinction Emit or something? Okay. So they're playing... Okay, I guess they're going to sack kill this, go to four. Got it. But I can just activate its ability, right? <laughs> I'm going to activate the ability. Thank you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> that card has an ability. Reading the card does, in fact, explain the card. I mean, I'm saying this as I didn't read my own card the turn prior, to be fair. Uh, nope. I'm not going to keep this. Yeah, see, this is these are the hands that I was talking about. It's like... It's like lands and spells, I guess, but there's no bard class. I'm still going to keep it. If we draw bard class, this hand goes brazy. Yeah, Clothis is reach. That's a good point. Spirits? Spiruto. Mm. Alright, well, this bard class that we're going to draw is about to go pretty hard. Listening to Dive Down, you mentioned trying to find a card for Rhinos to combat One Ring. What about Hide Seek? I actually forgot about that card until I was uh, talking in Spike's chat, and he was looking for a card for the, the Boros Lotus Field deck that was good in that deck. And I actually think that, um, yeah, you might be right. I think that Hide Seek could be really good right now. I've been lofty, loftily denied. Kodama of the West Tree. 3-3 three, three for 2G. Modify creatures you control of Trample. And then whenever it hits them, you search for a basic battlefield tap, then shuffle. Not too bad. I was I was specifically looking for a gruel legend. Like if it got discounted by two. If it got discounted by two off of Bard Class, I'd be much more into it. That one's not terrible. It's not a bad idea. Like that's a that's a good start. But I was I, I wanted to see if there was one specifically in Gruel that it got double discounted by Bard Class. Because those are your best, like, the best cards for this deck are gold cards. Oh my god. Why not Gigantha? Because mm. I foregore. <laughs> I don't have a better reason for it besides I foregore. Streamer foregore. Just, uh, you just pretend there's a Gig Gigantha on the sideboard. Just pretend. Could Invasion of Ikoria be good in here? Uh, maybe. I've always been kind of low on that card. It's not It's not terrible, but I've been. I've, I've always been kind of low on it. Alright, this one? Mm -mm 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 -mm. That one. I think I'm going to do this. And attempt to move to combat. I want to get the Galia trigger. So we're going to copy the one that's not attacking. So they might flash into Spellclaw to eat the Galia, but I'm basically, like, 
beating the Galia and getting a, a cat token, so I'm kind of making this... I ha kind of have the same amount of power on the board. What's up, Ojago? Use Galia, yes. Eh, okay. What about Rada for Reach? Which, uh, which... There's, like, a couple of different versions of Rada. Mina and Den. 2RG, 4-4, four, four, play an additional land. RG, return a land. Creature gets trampled until a turn. That one's not bad. Isn't there one that's, like, Halana? Halana and something that, like, puts a bunch of counters on stuff? What's that one called? Like, Halana and Alana or something? I don't remember the exact name of it. The Roommates. That card doesn't sound too bad. No, that, I think it's only red. It's red green two. The card that I'm thinking of, yeah, RG two, Alana and Elena. Yeah, two three first strike combat. Put X counters where X is its power. Could you against haste? Also, the cool thing about Halana is it also works. It also very works very nicely with Bard class because Halana gets an additional counter off of Bard class, and then it pumps the creature even more because it has more power. So that could actually be really, a really good idea. RG one three three. Uh, first strike on your turn. Look at the top card. You may play land. Six mana gets plus X plus X. Too much mana. A little too much mana. Uh, so, is there any way I can present a lethal attack? If I animate Chariot, they just go pathway, fire up Mutaball, tap Chariot. Two, four, six, eight. Which I guess would be lethal. Well, no, because I have to play creatures to animate the Chariot. Is there any way I can survive? I guess I can go Hajar Targnar Haste. Yeah, okay. Let's go Hajar Targnar. I guess this line loses to a Spell Queller. I think I might just be dead anyways. Regardless of what I do. So we'll activate Goro Goro. And we'll proceed to the combat phase. And if they tap anything, I can use whatever they tap to crew the chariot. Gwenna? Mm. Again, the issue with Gwenna is it not being a gold card means that it only gets discounted... It doesn't get double discounted by Bard class. The best cards for this deck are gold cards. So, like, I'm not even sure that we should be playing Felden, to be completely honest with you. Uh, is this not still lethal? This can't block. I think it's still lethal, right? Uh, 4, 7, 10, 16. Even if they have a removal spell, they still die. This is 15. Okay, I'm going to pass priority. They are going to slip out the back of this and still take 12. Okay, cool. All right, game two. Didn't expect that to happen. <laughs> Anyways, uh, running while I come in. What are we cutting? I'm not going to play Clothis. Very bad against Queller, and they don't put a lot of cards in the graveyard. I'm going to shave a Chariot, also bad against Queller, and shave a Felden. I think I'm good with this. Did not expect to win that game. Yeah, it's possible this deck wants to play Darmi or Xenagos, because those are good mid-range cards. I, I could see that for sure. I'm willing to believe that. Like I said, these... If, Every single Thursday, these are donation decks. These are not decks that I create. These are decks that are submitted to me by uh, by people who you know pay good money to, to watch these. And when it comes to dono decks, I typically don't really like to make a lot of changes because the general concept of like people submitting their thoughts to me and wanting me to try it out, I like to keep that intact as much as possible. So I don't I don't like doing a lot of changes to dono decks. Kind of just want to kill that now. Play around rattle chains. That's true. Embercleave does get discounted, so if you're attacking with four things, it would only cost one mana. That's kind of cool. Teamer for Training Grounds. I've never really thought about Training Grounds. Could be okay. Maybe I should have killed this. 4x blue eye control. Please don't. <laughs> Please spare me from the madness. I do not want to be subjected to that. Don't make me do it. Just be cool. Yeah, that's true. A lot of our creatures do have activated abilities. Uh, yeah, I'm just going to kill this thing now while they don't have Rattle Chains up. They could have Slip out the back. Or Spell Pierce. Ball Guys music? I don't understand the question. Or are you talking about EDM? I never really got into EDM. I listened to it a little bit, but... It's not like my... It's not what I listen to the most, for sure. It's not my forte. 
very good question. This is the part of the stream where Canister's chat would spam uh, exclamation point question mark. Very good question, chatter. Rude. Did. Yeah. Welcome to the Canister stream. Oh, I can't even attack. Because they have a 3-3. Three, three. That's unfortunate. I could have maybe attacked with a 3-3 three, three here, but... Meh. By doing it right, kind of. Right, I'll take one. We need a good card. Good card. Good card. That's, like, kind of a good card. Probably going to get Spell Quellard. Well, shit. I guess I could, like, suicide the Felden to try to get three looks at, like, a Rending Volley. Maybe that was actually good, because I have second Felden. I think I should have attacked there. I mean, they likely just take two damage. The game Fall Guys has music that sounded like the song before. Oh, really? Okay, I didn't know that. I haven't played Fall Guys in a while. People still play Fall Guys. Kind of a banger game. I just haven't played it in a while. Mm -mm -mm. At the check, yeah, I know. I look, I forgot about the Gigant, okay? I for, I forgot. Exclamation point, Jeff in the chat. I literally, I literally embodied the Jeff meme. Just for the sake of today's stream, pretend there is a Gigant on my sideboard. Like, if you, what, what I would recommend is if you get like a printout of a Gigant art and just like tape it onto your computer screen when you're watching today's stream. Then you can you can just pretend that it's there in spirit. Nah, you wouldn't want to play a fling, I think. Unless there was like a legendary creature that flung stuff. But you wouldn't want to play the card fling. I mean I wouldn't, I don't think. Only up one, dude. I've given up on that game already, Pike. I've I've played like two hours total, and I haven't even made it past the five percent mark, and I've already given up. I'm just off it. Hmm. One lander with a volley and a bard class, huh? I mean Shouldn't keep, but going to, <laughs> going to, and before they just had portable hole anyways. Yeah, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's that's the stuff right there. That's the stuff right there. Guess I should have went to five. In hindsight, I probably should have went to five cards. Drill land, turn too late. Mm -mm will simply not counter this, and they also won't portable hole it. Oh, Brian Stoutarm. I'm uh, pretty sure that card's not legal in the format that we are currently playing, but thank you for your suggestion, Chatter. <laughs> people actually, people don't even know what's legal in Pioneer these days. I'm sure nobody would call it out at, at an FNM. That's an, uh, that's an FNM level cheat right there. FNM level play. Yeah. Just be like, surely, I mean, I promise you, it got reprinted at some point, you know? You just gotta trust me, bro. You just gotta trust me, bro. We are Didge. You gotta get try to Mind Stone you at FNM? That one's definitely not legal. I know for a fact that one's not legal. Yeah, 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 yeah. Go. I play a 2-mana two 2-2. Two -two. It is your turn. Okay. Spectral Sailor. Okay. Ambassador. What the... He what is that card? What on earth? That... This is not a real card. Oh, it's an... Okay, yeah. I've, I told you, it's not a real card. This isn't a real set. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to pronounce that. But whatever. Yeah. That's... Uh, that is, in fact, not a real card. Can you not... Can you, like, stop doing that? Surely they don't have rattle chains, right? All right, they're going to have nothing, and I'm going to draw land. Legacy legal. Has anybody tried casting it in Legacy? It's a real card, and you can play it in Legacy. I still, I don't believe you. I mean, I know you're right, but I still don't believe you. You said the word sticker, and I'm just off it. Like, I'm, I'm just off it. Uh, I mean, I'm not technically dead, but I can't win.
Okay, I guess we should have kept the one later, huh? Ditch. Wonder if this deck needs some anthem like effect when we don't drop Bard Glass. Yeah, I mean, you could play, like, more good mid-range cards. People have suggested... I think the best one is probably Domri, the three-mana Domri, the Anarcha Bolas one, because it pumps all your creatures plus one plus oh. I think that's probably your best option. You could also play Xenagos to, like, lean more into the mid-range plan. And the cards... Like, so far, I've really not been a fan of Felden. Um, like, the fact that Felden doesn't get double discounted off of Bard class is kind of awkward. Yeah, Domri could be good. All right, the sand's busted. Bu -bu 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 busted. Well, we're not playing Mox Amber because we're not. Um, we talked about this in the intro, but we're not a combo deck. This is a this is a Bard class mid range deck, so we're not doing combo stuff with the typical stuff you see is Mox Amber, Bergy, and Senegos. We're not doing that kind of stuff. We're not a combo deck. We are a mid range deck. We don't have, we don't have an infinite combo. So we're just using this as, like, a card that allows us to push through a lot of damage the turn after we activate it. Like, you know, turn two this, turn three, activate triple spell or something. Like this hand, for example. We're going to go this on two, activate on activate on three, play both of these for free, and this for one mana. Like, that's that's a lot of stuff. That's the idea. Last time I tried Bard class, I had Senegos and Amber, but no Bergy. Yeah, Bergy, when I was playing the Bard class combo deck, Bergy kind of did always feel like the, the weak link. Yeah, Ber Bergy is just not a good card. I agree. Xenagos is not too bad, especially when you combine it with Bard Class, because, like, Bard Class, you're putting a bunch of stuff onto the battlefield, and Xenagos being able to replace that mana is is pretty key. And it gets double discounted by Bard Class, which is nice. But, yeah, we were talking about this, and I really do think that Bard Class is, like, the one card in the Pioneer format that might be the, like, that might have the, the highest gap of card is completely busted to nobody plays it. Like, this card is completely ridiculous if you can build around it, but nobody plays it. I mean, part of that is due to the fact of the presence of, like, like we talked about, Portable Hole, and there's a lot of, like, incidental ways to remove it. What's up, card bros? Blue-white control, bitch time. Or not, I don't know, I can counter this. It's good for me. Yeah, that's true, Xenagos mana works pretty well with Goro Goro. Wait, no, you can't do that, right? Because you have to be attacking with Goro Goro. And how are you floating Xenagos mana into combat? That just doesn't work, right? Oh, this might be the Lotus Field deck, right? See, the Bedge Nightmare is over for the first time since Neo came out. There are zero copies of Tristan Rectos. Oh, really? I didn't see that. No, that's dope, though. Okay, no land is kind of awkward. You can still double spell here, which is not too bad. Uh, attack for three... We're using the mana to do then? I don't know. <laughs> Unless you were doing it at F and M and you were just cheating. <laughs> Maybe you were literally cheating. Yeah, you can use the Targnar's ability. Yeah, yeah. Nah, Pike was just cheating. Nah, it's fine. I, you just you just outed yourself. It's fine. Please don't cancel Pike. We're gonna pretend that 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 never happened. O sevens for Pike. Pike has officially been canceled. What sweepers they play? I really hope they don't have temporary lockdown. Because we can't beat that card. I see. Okay. Well, I can beat that card. Kind of. Kind of, sort of. Maybe. Copium. Lotus Field. You know, land here. Okay, that's good. So, now I can go... What? Miglaz Goro Goro Haste? Seems fine to me. I don't think it's lethal. It's close. It's really damn close. And they're at six. That's gonna be a good turn next turn. You're a VIP and spike chat spikes and doom chats. Eat dingo or something. <laughs> Get the trifecta. I don't know why you're a VIP. You're not sub that you kinda just like post a bunch of nonsense. Maybe I should take Otter's VIP away. Now that you mention it. Release me from these chains. Okay. Main phase wandering emperor. Aren't they still dead on board? They exile Goro Goro, they take a... I guess they have to exile Miglaz and hope I have no creatures. Ah, well, bad news for you, I do have a creature. I actually have two creatures. This card is kind of powerful. Goro Goro. Goro Goro. Send him. Nah. 
could have played Clothis. Oh, I could have played Clothis and hasted it because it was turned on. You're right. No. All right, fine. I guess I punted. I guess I punted. Big Sedge. My streamer punting Sedge. Streamer punting. Do I want Cinder Vines against them? Yeah, the very rare Clothis haste attack. How many artifacts and shamans do they have? Are they? Did the, does the Lotus Field deck play Binding? I guess they just like cast a bunch of spells. So it might not be that bad as just pyrostatic pillar type thing. Mm, it's kind of mid. I don't know. Oh, they have Lockdown? Yeah, I guess if they have Lockdown, I probably want Cinder Vines. Can shave like a Felden or at least one. I do have two Besages though. Let's just play one Cinder Vines. I don't want to cut too many Haze creatures. All my cards are too good. I have nothing else to cut. Close DT next so I can be a mod in Spike Doom Dingo and Tutors. <laughs> it has to be organic. I'm kind of surprised. That you're in DT's chat a lot. I'm kind of surprised he hasn't modded you yet. I think Claw's kind of poopy. Mm. They don't have counter spells though. It does go upstairs. I'll cut one. Like the Lotus Field deck does not play counter spells. Oh, wait. Should I have Damping Sphere in my deck? I just realized they're Lotus Field. Uh, well, we don't know for a fact they're Lotus Field. They didn't actually play a Lotus Field, but they played three Triomes and a Doom Scar. So we kind of have to put them on Lotus Field, right? Yeah, too late, I think. Let's do two. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do two. Is Hazard bad? They have a lot of Exile. Maybe Hazard's not great. Like, that card's exceptional against Rakdos because they don't have a lot of Exile. Like, they don't have a lot of actual ways to remove it, but this deck has a lot more Exile-based removal spells. Your blue-black opponent is on 4 Narset and Notion Thief. 07s. We'll see ya. Can't help you. Can't help you say Nick. Uh, no red mana. Hmm, a mod check red mana? Can we get a mod check red mana? <clears throat> Mostly copium, though. Fantella, thank you for the nine. Almost exclusively copium on this channel. I'll get Kerberos in a second. Let me just put back some cards here. Um, I'm actually going to put back Cinder Vines. All right, we got Fantella with the nine and Curd Bros gifting a sub to Beast of Burden. Thank you for the subs. I appreciate that, guys. Uh-oh, we got a Ben Blyweiss tweet. What is this? There comes a time when a man just has to let go of his apes. Selling a lot. Slightly over a thousand revised Curd apes. The vast majority are slight play for a hundred. I don't know if any uh, if we get any Massachusetts locals in chat, but if somebody wants to uh, at David Feinstein, maybe he'll want to purchase those for the, the memento. If anybody knows that name, uh, you know. Dude, I had... Oh, my God. I can't find it, but I had a cube. I had, like... I once had a common on Comet cube. And there was... Uh, there was a... We used to team draft a lot at Feinstein's store. He owned a store called Die Hard Games in Rhode Island. And we would team draft every single week there. And for those of you who don't know Dave, uh, he would we, we would very frequently uh, take uncommons over mythic rares and not hate draft in team drafts, which people got very upset at him because in team drafts, you're supposed to hate draft the mythic rares and not pass them to the opposing team. And what ended up happening, there was a draft where he took, I think it was like, it was uh, Scars of Mirrodin, and he took Trigon of Rage over, it was pack three, I think, and he took Trigon of Rage over Elspeth, the like the Elspeth tier out the five minute Elspeth, and uh, I forgot he he passed it to my team and our team just like five zero swept them and just the Elspeth the Elspeth player easily three would and I had Dave sign the Trigon of Rage and I have the Trigon of Rage in a cube somewhere but I don't know where it is it's like in a stack somewhere and I had him like sign it on the, it was it was great sounds good JS have a good one buddy there was one time we were uh, it was Avison restored. And in pack three, I, he was passing to me, and he passed me a bonfire of the damned, and I literally fell out of my seat. Could not stop laughing. I miss Dave. I hope he's doing well. He's the clincher. Bang. Three. Three ball. I'm not going to play the Damping Sphere until they play a Lotus Field. I'm going to try and slow roll this for a little bit. I just realized they play Ondu Sky Ruins. Sheesh. Mm-mm-mm-mm. Can we bring back team drafts? I miss team drafts. Are we even sure this is Lotus Field? Um, well, I mean, traditional blue eye control wouldn't play lands like this. Like, they played three Sparrows head court. Yeah, okay. I was like, very, very positive that they... The traditional blue eye would not play these kinds of lands. 
Uh, kind of awkward if I get Wandering Emperor here, but I don't really think I can play around it. This kind of is what it is. Yeah, they're playing like Proctor Lotus Field. Mm -mm. Don't know requirements, and if I do it, it will be played today or it's already booked for next week. Uh, I believe that we are booked the next two weeks, actually. Give me a second to check. Uh, okay, that's fine. Let me take a look here. No, no queue. Yeah, so I try to do, I try to keep it to three a week. So I have three for this week and three for next week already. So if you were to submit a donation deck, it would actually be for, I, and I only do them on Thursdays. I don't want to do donos on different days because I like to kind of, you know, I don't want to have, because the dono, the dono, the donation decks are like not a ton of, the views are definitely down on donation decks. So I like to kind of condense them into one day. So I'm not spreading them out throughout the week. Uh, so in any case, it would be on the 20th would be the, uh, the next available slot to ferry. Okay. As far as dono requirements, I mean, try to keep it in Modern or Pioneer. I don't really want to play other formats than Modern or Pioneer right now. Mm. kind of feel like I'm going to get swept here. Uh, I don't think there's a ton I can do about it. Could have maybe held up a Seiju. And if they sweep me, I can sacrifice this to keep this around. And then threaten to ferry next turn. What about deck decks? Um, kind of the same thing. I mean, I would prefer Modern or Pioneer. I don't, I'm just not playing a lot of Legacy. I don't know how much insight I can provide you outside of Modern Pioneer. You can try and I can, I can do my best, but I can't make any promises. But, you know, Modern, Modern and Pioneer are the formats that I'm, you know, really into and spending a lot of time and energy on. Oh my god, I cannot beat this card. But deck decks are uh, 10 bucks or two, two gifted subs. Standard, I actually probably know less about Standard than I do Legacy right now. How do you expect me to beat this card? Yeah, I just don't want to spend any more mental energy on this game. <laughs> like a modern deck tech, is it restricted to a certain day? Oh no, deck techs you can you can just submit whenever. I'll do deck techs. It does deck. There's like no limit on to on those specifically. Like if you submitted one right now, I just take a look at it. This should be a channel plan option as well as like I said, five ten bucks or two gifted subs. I'm sure standard's fine. I just haven't had that. I haven't spent a lot of time on it since the San Diego RC. But I'm sure it's like I'm sure it's not that bad right now. Game three: Lotus Field, Blue White. <clears throat> One of the decks of all time. Some would say. Some are saying a deck of all time. All right, I will play first. Shocker. Uh, lands and spells, good enough for me. It's not the best mix of lands and spells, but I think it's good enough. Bard class without box ambers, yeah. Uh, turn one shock. Uh, because my life total is irrelevant, and what if I draw the other, like, another, uh layer of the hydra but my life total does not matter against blue white so i'd much rather just lean on these kind of this is weird i think i'm gonna go besiege you targnar attack for three and then if they doom scar me i can just sack this and if their plan is to like prismatic ending or not prismatic ending uh like march or portable hold this and then doom scar in the following turn they have to do that main phase and then i can go or like portable hole they main phase this portable hole and then i just go untap play both of these and then even if they do Scar, I can sack the other Hajar. Yeah, there's a lot of Gruul Legends. There is a lot of Gruul Legends. Last night at Pioneer event around town, opponent pointed out that Reckless Bushwhacker was an ally after I play Fire... What's a Fire Mantle Mage? I, I've never even heard of that card. Oh yeah, well this is Pioneer. I'm sure there are more in Modern. I wonder if there's enough in Modern to make like a, a Bard Glass Modern deck. There might be. Bard Glass is a messed up card. Gives the team menace. I see. Tree mana. Aganjo the Hajar. I see. Their plan is Aganjo Hajar and then Doomscar. Uh, I guess I'll sack it. I will use this. That's a really good draw step. So they go Doomscar, go to eight. 
Is there any any universe where I can attack with Hazard next turn? I don't think so. <laughs> we, drew, we drew one extra card, which is going to prevent the Hazard attack. It's kind of funny. Um, I mean, I don't think their deck has counter spells. Fuck, what if I just fired up the Den? Put them to four with the Cinder Vines in play? I actually kind of like that. Yeah, let's do that. I don't think they can kill the Den, right? Yeah, I like this. No Mox is weird. It is. I, I think the theory behind this, Brennan, is like we want to be more of a mid-range deck, but even if we're being a mid-range deck and not comboing, it still might make sense to play Mox. I could see that. Jwari Veto and Discontinuity. Oh, true, 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 true. Yeah, yeah. Which, like, none of those really do that much here. Yeah, it might. It, maybe it does. The cards that we were talking about that I haven't been a big fan of so far is Felden and Clothis. Clothis might be more of a sideboard card. And Felden's been kind of mid. Goro Goro has been kind of cracked. I think two of that card is, like, at just perfect. It's so sick. Uh, well, now I can attack with Hazard. I, funny enough, I kind of don't want to attack with Hazard Because that means they can exile it with, um, with Wandering Emperor. So I'm actually just going to do this. Like, what are they going to do? I guess they could have March. They could have drawn March. All right, no March. Trigger. Yeah, two mana to four mana is great, I agree. You're probably right about that. All right, there are two against the Cinder Vines. I don't know how they get out of this. Farewell. But then they just lose to the Den on board. If they go land farewell, they're just dead on board. Yeah, they, they get to cast one more spell this game. Make it count. <laughs> it better be a spell that literally says you win the game. Field plus Wrath. Uh, oh, sure, yeah. I guess they could, like, Field plus Wrath, but then they're at one, and, like, the Hazard still kills them. This deck's been feeling okay. Again, like, not a big fan of Felden, not a big fan of Clothis. Would consider some number of... The cards we want to add are Domri, Anarchobolus, Xenagos the Reveler, and Mox Amber. Some, ver some number of those cards over the Feldens and the Clothis. Maybe the fourth Miglaws could go as well. Uh, maybe you don't main deck the Abrades. But yeah, I, I like the shell a lot. It's like, it's felt really good so far. I've been happy with it. Okay, much better. Put back Chariot. This hand's great. In love with the curve of this deck. I mean, it could use some more one drops. Definitely could use some more one drops. Dark Slick Shores. Rogues, perhaps? I mean, their their username is Turn 1 Aether Vile. I would not be surprised if they were playing Rogues. One drop legends just suck. Zergo's okay. Zergo's not the most embarrassing card. Ooh, blue black control gamer. You think I'm gonna get Jwari Disruptions? I sure hope I'm not getting Jwari Disruptioned. Boss champ. I don't know if Archfiend usually plays field. That's what kind of, well, some of them do. Some of them do play field. Wish we had a good green aggro one drop legend. What are the green what are the green one mana legends? Is it only the the one two that makes tokens? Yeah, Ovi or whatever it is. Mirax. That's a card. Mirax jump scare. Okay. That's a little scary. I do have a pretty good turn. I would like to draw a I want to draw a Galia or the other one that I don't have. Galia or Hajar. And it's neither of those. Well, I will activate. Mm, all right, just play up my hand. That's super annoying. <laughs> the 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 full art clothis turns into a non full art clothis when it's not a creature, but then when you turn it into a creature, it gains its uh the full artness back. It's really weird. It actually kind of looks heinous. I hate it. I hate it here. Build the Seaf was playing lately at three copies of field. Okay. Yeah, it's definitely a control deck. It's definitely not Archfiend. Sensor. It's a good one to know about. And because Chariot costs three, we can play around Sensor. How much do I care about this Narsa? Two, four, six, seven. So I can go play Beseju. Chariot, leave up a mana. Yeah, nice Sensor. This turns on Clothis. <coughs> I don't think I care about the Narset. I think I'm just going to send both of them. I may have Fatal Push for this. I guess that wouldn't be the most surprising thing to happen. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's fine. Alright, you can go. So no attacks this turn. 
I guess I could... Oh, no, yeah. Well, I could animate the Chariot and then kill the Narset. That worth it? No, I think I'd rather save the Crater's Claws. The final level might be good this game. Yeah, true. We might actually finally activate this the first time I've done it so far. It's just like, the thing about this deck, because it's a little bit more aggressive, like, the third chapter doesn't come up too often, given that you're usually, you're putting a lot of pressure on your opponent when you're activating this the for the first chapter. So it usually just doesn't come up because you've killed them by the time you get to that much mana. But it might come up this game. Yeah, no, I wasn't going to attack with the Chariot, but the if I crew the Chariot, it gives me a four-power creature to get the Ferocious on Crater's Claws to kill the Narset. Smeetook Massacre? They did reveal Massacre. Yeah, okay. So we know they have Sensor still. Would love to draw a two-mana Legend here. It's not quite, because that does not turn on the Clothis. Um, what's up, Ron? Well, I'm going to cast it. Still think I don't really care about the Narset. Like, I only have one card in hand anyways. Just going to attack them. Even though it isn't a legend, is Stormseeker worth slots for haste? Maybe. I could see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I should have specified. Should have specified, deck. You gave me the wrong two mana legend. I did ask for it, to be fair. I did get what I asked for. Okay, that works. That one does work. I might also cruise the chariot. It's probably getting countered, if I had to guess. Walmart ramen, classic. Ayo. I mean, I guess I'll attack. They still have to show me that they can actually beat Glothus. I'm not convinced that they can. You said Pioneer doesn't have free spells. Yeah, literally a free spell. Imagine. Literal opponent literally just cast a free spell. This is cheating. Yeah, it's like it's like it's it's like a bard class deck. Call it Bard Class Beatdown. It's not really a good name for the deck, but that's kind of what's going on here. It's this deck. Golgari Yogmoth. Looks pretty standard. You should play more rings though. Field of Ruin. Okay. Mm hmm hmm. I guess they can Odawara the Clothis. Cling to dust. I accept. Yeah, I've seen some of the... I've seen Zerk. I think Zerk, like, either posted it was a League 5 or some other result with, uh, like, recently with Yawgmoth over the past couple of days. And I think he was playing, like, two rings or something. And I'm just like, why are you just not playing four of that card? Two and one so far, so far as Vexus hasn't felt too bad. It's been good. I like it. Some changes that I think we, we can discuss after, but I've been liking it so far. Cards that I'm not a big fan of. Well, I mean, I was going to say Clothis, but Clothis has looked pretty good against our blue-black do-nothing opponent. Um, but Clothis has been mid, this card's been mid, and we were thinking about adding some amount of Mox Amber, Domri, and Xenagos to make it, like, to lean more into the mid-range plan. Yeah, I say Clothis is bad as my, it's just soloing my opponent, but, I mean, this is, like, a, a very specific matchup for it. All right, you can go. Attack you for three. Clothus seems mid because most decks don't have a graveyard. Yeah, I think it is a good sideboard card. It, it is definitely a good sideboard card because there are some decks that just have a really hard time beating it, like my opponent. Like, how do they ever beat this card? They're a blue-black deck. I guess they could have Invoke Despair, but I could even just sack this instead. Again, really the only out is Odawara, where they go end step Odawara, untap counter it. So I think... Some I saw some people suggesting things on Twitter about like how to fix the ring, and the like the one of the only good suggestions that I've seen so far is if you add text on it to where you can't cast a second copy if you already have one in play, because that would prevent you from like doing legend rule stuff with it. If that makes sense, or you could also like give it hexproof so that you can't blink it or stuff, on, or give it shroud. I don't I don't know. There's there's other ways to do it. All right, they died. Cool. Clothis literally just soloed them. Clothis soloing. Uh, we've played against Blue White Spirits, which was the deck that we lost to. And then we beat Blue White Lotus Field, and I cannot remember the first deck we played against. 
Oh, red, black, vampire. So, not the best, like, the best spread of decks so far. You're definitely going to cut the abrades. I think I trimmed, what, like a Felden and a Crater's Claws and brought in these four. I don't even think I want two Cinder Vines against them. I'm just going to keep in the Feldens. Make the life loss an emblem so extra copies still lose you X plus one life even if they only have one or none counters. Oh, sure, sure, sure. That's fair. So you can't, like, reset the life loss. So, like, the it would be activation would be tap. You gain an emblem. Well, you could just say, hmm, how would you word that? Because if it just tapped to give, hmm, I don't know. Like you put, because you can't put counters on the emblem. Yeah, I was thinking like a Chandra emblem where you would just get more copies of it. Something along those lines, but I don't know exactly. I'm sure there's a way to word it. Put counters on emblems? Today I learned. Today I learned. Get multiple burden emblems? Yeah, yeah, I think that's what we're saying too. It's like you would add counters to the burden emblem, but then when you played the new ring, it would stack. So you would get another emblem and you would keep adding to that additional emblem. So like, yeah, and that would, that would kind of make sense. Well, didn't counter this. I like that. Love it when they don't counter my bard class. Yeah, experience counters. There's like that black green card that I've seen floating around in cubes. I forget what the name's called, but it's like three mana for a four, three. You get experience counters. That card's kind of cool. Yeah, Merkin or something. Name sound that sounds familiar. Marin, yeah, Marin of the something clan Toth. I don't know, something like that. Dude, Bard class is kind of busted. <laughs> like Bard class just is busted, right? I guess I'll kill Narset this time because it's like kind of free. Oh, so they make experience emblems, and then you add experience counters to the emblem. Okay. Yeah, so you could do something like that with the ring. <clears throat> Cast it! A removal spell, perhaps? I always love Dono decks. Uh, Thursday is my favorite day of the week. I tell you this all the time. I know the viewership is not as high on Thursdays, but it genuinely is my favorite. The day that I look forward to the most of the entire week. It's I, I, ha I have such a great time on Thursdays. All right, pay for sensor. Pay for sensor. You know, they definitely have sensor in their hand. Chat, what are the odds that they cycle sensor end of turn? Like 100%. 1 trillion percent they're cycling sensor. Oh, all right, whatever. Go. I guess the answer is zero. As a matter of fact. I'm just going to do this. I don't care if they kill the first cherry because I have a backup. And if they don't do anything, then I'll just activate Bard Class. If they do kill Chariot, then I'll play the other Chariot. And I found you. Is there, like, any reason not to play the other Bard Class? I guess I'll cast it. I guess playing this is worse if they have a sweeper. <laughs> See, I told you. I knew they had sensor. You you can just tell when the control players have sensor. True, I was going to say they don't have double black, but they could have extinction event. They showed us meat hook last game, and they obviously don't have meat hook because they would have played this on black if they did. We're going to Narset Days Undoing when I have basically no cards in hand. Not the best play. And we're going to pass. We have, we have, uh, passed the turn. I'm gonna fire up the chariot. I'm gonna go to combat. It's going to attack you. You were wrong. You do not get an emblem for experience counters. The counters put on the player. Yeah, like poison and energy. That's kind of how I thought it was. Similar to energy counters. You watch the card market video on Jund. What was that? What was, like, what was the idea of the video? I saw a YouTube title for a card market video this morning. That was like, they played a deck of, was like 40 Ragavans versus 40 Lightning Bolts or something like that. It was, uh, I, I didn't watch the video, but it sounded kind of interesting. Oh, History of Jund, I see. <laughs> you just balance them on your head. Take like those old, like those, um, the beads or whatever. Remember how they used to do, they, they took like Mankala beads or whatever, and they just used those as counters. You have to put those on top of your head when you get experience counters. That's how they, I don't make up the rules. 
Featuring Reed Duke. Wow. Weird flex. The Sun Cleanser. Does Sun Cleanser remove experience counters? Oh, it just says all counters. Okay. Target opponent loses all counters. They're trying to take my experience away, though. What the hell? Like, I, I, paid a, I paid good money for that experience. You can't take my experience away. You eat an M&M every time I get an experience counter. How do you keep track, though? You, like, weigh yourself in between turns or whatever? Nah, fuck this chariot stuff. <laughs> I'm not animating chariot. I'm just doing this. Alright, I will attack you. Yeah, I'm not even going to animate this. I'm going to attack you. Attack. Bang. Mm, casual lethal. No, it's not even that casual. It's just like... <laughs> Alright, Shark Typhoon block, go to two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, trade for my Lair of the Hydra. That's why I fired up the Lair, because I knew you had the trade for it. Go to two. I mean, I guess if they have a Sweeper, they can maybe not be dead. But then, I don't know, they're just... They do a lot of cards. Blue, blue. Four mana. Recycling a Typhoon? This is Intervention. Is this a straw two? Top X, put up to two of them into your hand. Yeah, it's just like four mana divination. Okay, that was interesting. Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, we're three and one. Uh, Alright, four one prediction. I don't really know what happened there. That's kind of weird. They just died. I don't really have anything to say about the game other than uh, they just died. They did some stuff and they they died. Uh, this hand's busted. I mean, any hand with lands and bard class is busted. The Archmean Dex Top 32 Sunday Challenge. Did they really? I didn't look. I well, that's not true. I saw that uh, that Mokdamara top aided or did Mokdamara top eight or top maybe top sixteen, but I saw he did well. You will not portable hole my bard class. You will not portable hole my bard class. You will not portable hole. You will also not have temporary lockdown. Chat, you just have to believe. You just have to believe that they don't have the lockdown. All right, fine. I have a second one anyways. All right, no lockdown, no lockdown, no lockdown, no lockdown. I guess I have Besaju and Miglaws, even if they have lockdown, so it's not even that bad. Uh, Well, I'm just going to dump my hand. Yeah. Because even if they have Lockdown, uh, we can just go Besaju, activate Goro Goro, and they die. Right. I guess we're kind of screwed by Verdict if we do it this way. 5, 8, 11. So if I play Miglaws, I can deal them 11 and put them to 6. And then get Verdicted. Am I okay with that? Probably, because I have a Bard class in play. Yeah, probably. A little bit sketchy if they Verdict, though. Yeah, we get the we get the draw off Galia, which is nice. I guess they could march the Galia. The only shitty thing about well, that's no, I guess it's fine. Yeah, they are gonna march the Galia, I think. They're marching Miglaws. Okay. I wonder if that means they have lockdown, which is again totally fine because we have this. We we are kinda fine against lockdown. We can even lock down we can even besage you now. Yeah, this is fine. I march Golly over Miglaws because they had lockdown. That was that was pretty obvious. Okay, bricked on that. We can. Oh no, I should have. Mm, I should have played my land first because I would have rather have made a token than activate Bard class. I think it's like kind of close though. Maybe it's better to activate Bard class. I'm not sure. Oh no, nah, the five five would have been better. Yeah, the five five would have been a lot better. I think. Okay, that's bad. Well, the 5-5 five five would have died to this anyways. Uh, <laughs> I could put them to 1. I think I'm not going to cast it. I'm going to hold. The other way around, why would they have March Galia? Well, I'm saying if they don't have Lockdown, it might be better to March Galia. Uh, because then I don't draw cards. Well, no, I guess that's... I guess, yeah, no, you're right. Because if they, if they March this, then I don't draw cards anyways. So, you're right, yeah. They did it the right way. Because either way, I don't draw cards that turn. Are you playing Claws? I mean, like, I don't think it's that bad of a card. You have a lot of four power creatures. You will resolve. Hmm. You will not resolve. The second lockdown was tough. All right, I got a 3-3. Three, three. I got a 3-3. Three, three. What you got? 
Hmm. Probably going to concede this one pretty quickly. Probably going to go ahead and pack this one in pretty quick. Yeah. All right, I'm good. I've seen enough. I am good. Let's go cut the abrades. I want to bring in Hazarets and Cinder Vines. Cut the abrades, a Crater's Claws, and I think we cut a Felden last time. Yeah, I should probably just cut both Crater's Claws. They're not that good against them. Finder Giganta, because I forgot. I, again, pretend there's a Giganta on the sideboard. I just forgot about it. Why Scoop? <laughs> Seems like first first time viewer? First time viewer? You know me. I don't. I don't. I don't play it out against blue white control. If I'm like, if I'm like two percent to win, I'd rather just do anything with my time. It is just not worth it. the The misery of sitting there while they're just like twiddling their thumbs is just. Uh, I'm not about that life. I think I'm casting cinder vines here. I don't know if that's right. Yeah, lacked critical information. I I did in fact foregore about Gigantha. This is obviously worse if they have Sensor, but if I draw a land, I get the double spell next turn, which is why I want to do it this way. Yeah, Scoop is plus EV. That's the thing, you have to realize when you're playing against blue Eye control, like, <laughs> your time is a lot more valuable than you may think it is. <laughs> you are allowed to concede at any time. I know that's a, a wild concept, but you are, in fact, allowed to concede the game at any time. If you are not enjoying yourself and not having fun, uh, you can just go do something else. <laughs> That's how magic works. Magic is great. What is this? What did you do? Why do you keep sending me, like, stock Yawkmoth lists? I mean, they look stock to me. I'm not noticing anything different. Trying to do your job from home? Is your job making stock Yawkmoth lists? <laughs> You're doing a pretty good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, motherfuckers will just send a deck list and it's stock Yogmod. <laughs> oh, shit. Alright, I think the blue white control matchup might be bad. Combat. They're letting me attack, which means they probably have second Wandering Emperor. <sighs> Ever beat second Wandering Emperor? So I just, like, never attack the whole game? Yeah, fuck it. Go. It's, like, very obvious. Counter on that. Would felt him be good in P and LR. Mm, might not be that bad. I don't know. Two mana 2-2 two -two is kind of sketchy. Guess I could have made mana there... But making mana does not play around make disappear. And they can even sack a token anyways. Uh, I mean, I'm still going to keep playing around it. I know they have it. I'm just going to pass. I'm not going to attack until I can present a lethal attack through an Emperor, which is going to be tough to do. I guess maybe I'm never going to get to that point. Temporary lockdown. Okay, that's a little unfortunate. Could have left up mana for... Oh, I guess that was a reason to go mana with Clothis. Because then I could have left up mana for Cinder Vines with the trigger on the stack. Yeah. Okay, maybe I should have made mana last turn. I didn't think about that. Your turn. Mm -mm. Foreshot on a Boros PM main. Yes. Yeah, if you're playing the Boros Pia deck, I think you should play four showdowns. It's just the best card in the deck. Surely they won't die to a single Glothis. I mean, you kind of underestimate how good Glothis is. We played against blue-black control, and it just soloed them. We're kind of out of spells now. That one, they probably have to counter. I guess they don't, because I can't use it this turn. Hmm... I guess we could do like this, maybe. This is probably okay. Three, four, five. Oh no, they can just activate this, can't they? Okay, never mind. <laughs> activate Chariot Pass. Once again, should have made mana. Yeah, I could have made mana and then used the Miglaws. Yeah, they can Emperor the Miglaws. 
Oh, God. That was the throw. I'm just throwing. 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 This is what happens when I play against blue-white control. I just zone out. Because I just get so bored. You know? Every single time I play against blue-white control, the same thing happens. I can't be the only one. I can't be the only one that gets bored to death. Your turn. Sorry, skill issue. Yeah. <laughs> I guess it is, in fact, an issue of the skill variety. Oh, they're definitely having fun. Why is MTG bot going ham right now? What the hell? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. I can make a five, five, which is not enough to attack. Your turn. Yeah, MTG bot is just like advanced BMing me. Are we never blocking with Felden? Why are we never blocking with Felden? I don't know. That's a good question. I might want to consider blocking with Felden at some point. Why? Why haven't I thought of that yet? Yeah, why, why am I never blocking with Felden? Honestly, I probably should be attacking with it. <laughs> Honestly, I probably should be attacking with it. Because <laughs> I'd rather just trade this for an impulse. Yeah. Can at least trade it for an impulse. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Alright, three cards. Anything good? Anything good. Eh, I mean, it's going to get countered, but it is good. Where's my homie? Oh, he's over here. I was like, where did he go? Alright, guess this. That surely won't get countered. Wow, it actually didn't get countered. I did not think we'd get this far. Uh, okay. Go. Interesting. Did not think that was gonna happen. Well, we're here, I guess. <laughs> yeah, do not pog. Wait, don't, isn't there like a do not pog emote? Hold on. Because chat always pogs too early. Do not pog. Maybe it's no pog? It might be no pog. Yeah, here it is. All right, I am enabling no pog. No pog has been enabled. So whenever we are in a position where you do not pog, you can type no pog. Casting the Galia wasn't very good. Well, I wanted to use the mana pre-combat, right? Okay. I mean... What's the dealio? I know I lose Galia, but that's just more fuel for Clothis. All right. All right, untap. I think they have Settle the Wreckage. You think they're a Settle the Wreckage gamer? Am I ever playing around Settle? I mean, do I even have to cast spells? Can I just pass? I, mean, I don't really have to do anything, right? Attack with Felden. I guess I could send Felden. Attack with everything but Clothis. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of not that great into another Emperor, though. Same with the Felden attack. What if I just don't do anything? Honestly, I'm just going to pass. <laughs> I, I don't have to do anything. I have this in play. They have to answer this. I'm just going to chill. I don't need to cast Chariot this turn because there's still two more things in the graveyard. But at some point, I can cast Chariot to put it in the graveyard for Clothis. And we super lose to Farewell. Oh, Lay Down Arms. Yeah, that's a good reason. They're casting Soul Partition. Okay, so I guess their plan is to counter Clothis in the way back down. Uh, shh. Sure, that's fine. Well, now we could even, like, maybe Clothis pre-combat, test the waters a little bit, and then maybe decide to not play around Settle the Wreckage next turn. Okay. Uh, medium annoying. Medium annoying. And they're at four? Huh. So, I cast Clothis, they counterspell, then maybe I can resolve Chariot? I mean, it's like a pretty good chance they have March, right? I think I'd rather go Clothis, get it countered, play Chariot, then I could send this Chariot. Oh, fuck, I can't do that. This thing costs five. Oh, right, Clothis costs five. Hmm, never mind, I can't do that. Well, if I'm in a position where I can only cast one spell, it might just be better to do this. Hmm, might actually maybe still better to do this. Activate Lair, swing a Chariot. Hmm, well, then they just march the Chariot, right? But I guess them marching chariot is better than marching lair. Yeah, it's really bad versus wandering emperor. 
I'm going to cast Chariot. I don't know if this is right, but I'm going to cast Chariot. Mm, yeah, I don't have any good lines against Emperor. I mean, the one good line against Emperor is just Clothe this Pass. Okay. Uh, this is the one I want to keep. So this is slightly better against Emperor, because I get to keep the three tokens. Mm -mm. I guess I could also still fire up the layer here. Right? It's just kind of free. Because if they Emperor the Chariot, then they can't make a token to block the layer. Mm -mm -mm. So they go Emperor, kill this. Uh, down to three, up to five, then back down to four, so they break even this turn, because they take one here, one here, gain two. Like, leaving a mana for lockdown? Yeah, potentially. They've How many lockdowns have they gone through? Only two? Or only one? Yeah. Pretty high likelihood they have lockdown. So maybe the one damage isn't worth it. It's so like, then if, uh, if they lock down, they go to three, then I can layer next turn, and maybe play this... But maybe it's not worth getting in the one damage there. It's close. Okay, uptick Emperor. But I mean, they have to have a Sweeper, I think. Okay, so they like 1,000% have... Um, what's it called? Settle. So I just attack with the cats. Make them settle. Hopefully they don't have a counter spell for this. For 5, 6, 7, 8. I can cast both of these and hold up Cinder Vines. Let's attack first. Let's just get settled. Second Emperor. Mm, they go to three. Go to three, exile a cat up to five. They would go at one, though. They would be at one, though, which I'm, like, totally fine with, right? Yeah, the blue eye control players always play Settle. We're going to Aether Gust the Clothis. Well, I will, in fact, top that. I'm not going to cast this because it's lethal next turn, anyways. We send all three. Uh, sending two is worse against Emperor, so I think sending three and just making them settle the cats is fine. They got one more spell. Not if it's absorb. They can absorb, go to one, up to four. So if they have absorb, they can get one more, one more spell, or multiple more spells. Yeah, sending two also is bad against the hall. Also, very important that I did not cast the cloth this pre-combat because otherwise they would go gust and then settle. <laughs> I guess I could just choose to not search, right? Yeah. Okay, they're putting... They're not making a token. Uh, okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. So they can animate Hall, block Galia, and still hold up Absorb. One, two... I have exactly enough mana to play Galia, animate Lair for two, and play Clothis. Let's play Galia and see what they do. Okay, so if we're putting them on Absorb, I should probably just make Layer for two. Yeah, I'm going to do that. Because I have two lethal attackers, the hull is not sufficient, so they have the hull plus something else. And then hopefully that means I can also resolve Clothis. I guess they could have second Settle. What's up, Snack Bar? Okay, they do have a second Settle, but now they can't counter the Clothis. Right? Yeah, they just can't counter Clothis. All right, good luck. <laughs> I don't know how you're supposed to get out of this, given that you cannot cast spells. Uh, they have to have a creature that kills Cinder Vines? Like, Night of... I don't, I don't even know. <laughs> I guess they get a boarded in Skyclave Apparition, but... Odawara? Well, then they were still in the same spot, right? If they Odawara the Clothis, then I'd just replay the Clothis, and they still can't counter it because of the Cinder Vines. They can animate Hall and gain two off of it. Oh, they can Emperor their own Hall. Okay, all right. Touche, touche. I didn't even think about that. Wow. All right. Well, they go to one. They still can't cast spells, right? All right, go. <laughs> I mean, it was cute that they bought a turn, but I, <laughs> they're still in the same spot, right? <laughs> like, they're still in the same spot. <laughs> it is nice that they bought a turn. You know, I applaud them for doing so. But you're uh, you're still fucked. All right, game three. That was pretty sweet, though. I got to give them credit. That was pretty nice. A line of all time.
I have a question which I need a professional opinion on. I have to decide either to play Coma or Titan in my Karuga Fire 7 slot in a meta of aggro and control. What would I do? Coma or Titan? Definitely Titan. The life gain is way more important than Coma, in my honest opinion. I, I do I don't like Coma at all. I think Titan is the is the best one. Professional opinion. Uh I'm gonna keep the sand. Sand's good. That is, in fact, a card. That is, in fact, a card. Mm, I'm gonna leave it with my worst one first. I think they're countering whatever I play this turn, so I'm gonna leave it the worst one first. I mean, honestly, this authority is pretty good against us. Card goes pretty hard. I kinda have to slam Miglaws next turn. Hope to not get Wrathed. In my professional opinion, what would I play at FNM? Just Esper Greasemanger, just Sky Narset. I would play uh, your pet deck. That's the deck that I would recommend. In my professional opinion, I would play your pet deck. Alright, 100% getting verdicted. There's no way they'd let that resolve if they didn't have verdicts. Or at least Emperor. Yeah. Land, please? Untap land to be huge. Oh, how about another 4-drop? Yeah, that works. That works, too. It's like kind of the same thing. <clears throat> 25k points from a donor deck. You want to watch me play dragons? Dragon these nuts. Okay, they let me untap. Uh, I am kind of fine if they want to emperor the Miglaws, because I'm still getting a two for well, not really a two for one, but I'm still killing the authority, which is all that matters. I guess it's like kind of a I mean I want to do this anyways. I'm not playing a spell, right? And they don't know that. All right. Go. I kinda I kinda want to do this anyways. Get honest opinions from Spike, but you get professional opinions from Doom. <laughs> that sounds about right. That sounds about what's going on here. See ya. This has been kind of a hell of a match, huh? I almost checked out in game one. Or game two. I did check out in game one. Um, I really... I think I'm going to go attack play Hazaret. Yeah, I'm going to play Hazaret, because I have two Hazarets anyways. Shark Typhoon? Oh, well now I'm probably going to resolve Chariot. If they're going to Shark Typhoon here. And if they block, I can just pump, right? Which, I think that's worth it. We can just pump and play Hajar? Yeah. Mm, uh, no. And then if they Wrath me, I can just sack Hajar. It sucks that I have to play the Sokenzon here, but I really want to dump cards in my hand for Hazaret, even though the Sokenzon is really cool when I have two Legends. I just think it's a lot better to to be able to play towards Hazaret. <laughs> yeah, text on cards. I mean, maybe they just wanted the trade for the counters anyways. Okay, how likely are we to get Settled this turn? Yeah, I feel like I can, pro I can probably play around Settle. Just attack with Miglaws. No, it's so much worse against Wandering Emperor. Whatever. If they settle me, I could just resolve Chariot, hopefully. They did have two settles last game. But, I don't know. I just have all spells in hand. I think it's fine. Oh, that's also fine. Okay, now I'm going to play Hazard because they're more likely to have a counter spell here. And I don't care if the first Hazard gets countered. Oh, shit. I <laughs> instinctively clicked over here where it would say no, thinking it was Make Disappear, but it was actually Aether Gust. Eh, maybe that's fine. Honestly, it might be fine. Okay, that's not fine. That's actually quite bad for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So this turn, we probably have to go Galia, send both at Tef. Yeah, we gotta go Galia, send both at Tef. Just kind of, like, pray that it works. I don't really expect it to, but I cannot let them have Tef. And I feel like if they had Settle, they might have settled the turn before instead of Marching? I don't know. Wraith Morn, thank you for the Twitch Prime. I appreciate that. Mm, okay, I'm gonna bottom that. Well, now this sucks. I got you animate. Mm, oh, you wanted me to animate this and just send both of these? Maybe. Oh, the sacrifice could have hit the Teferi for an additional point. Yeah, true, 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 true. That's a good point. 
think didn't think about that. No, you're 100 percent correct. There's no point in putting it on the bot. If I'm gonna bot it, I might as well psych it anyways. Uh, sure. So now we maybe have to cherry it. I don't even know, man. This is rough. This is rough, 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 rough. So if I hazard it this turn, I'm at three cards. Next turn, draw land or three play both of these. Then I have one card left. So I guess I should hazard it here. I don't even know. Hazard's better into verdict, slightly. It's also like kind of better into a counter spell because I have the second hazard and they don't know about that. Try to resolve class. Uh. Well, if I draw land, I can go class, activate, chariot, and still attack with Hazard next turn, right? I guess if I chariot and they wrath me, I could just use the Hazard to crew the chariot. Okay, well, we need to land here. Land is big game. Land is a massive game here. Fuck you. Go. Nope. Yeah, it didn't specify. Chariot would cost three. Oh, right, yeah. So I guess I couldn't double spell anyway. So it would, only make, it would only make it cost one less. True, true, true. Alrighty. Man, I heckin' love blue-white. Blue-white, bat chest. Literally just bat. Actual bat chest. Blue-white, bat chest. Modest, thank you very much for the raid. I appreciate that. Hope you had a great stream. Welcome everybody from Modest Stream. Mm -mm. <laughs> blue White is such a nice deck. No, fuck Blue White. <laughs> literally, literally just fuck Blue White. Oh my god, this is so miserable. Okay, well now I can activate Cinder Vines, which I like. This game is like kind of oddly still winnable. I guess the Deluge makes it kind of awkward. But we can pop the Lockdown end of turn and then fire up the Chariot. What do you mean winnable? You'll see. The Tefalt will be tough. I mean, I'm going to try to attack Teferi this turn. They did not Deluge. Oh, I guess they probably just have Settle, right? I mean, we can pretend they don't have Settle. Because I certainly can't beat Settle. Mm -hmm. Wow, they had settled. No way. No way. <laughs> oh, I guess I should have activated it. I'm just kind of checked out of this game at this point. <clears throat> yeah, there was no way of knowing that they would ever have settled the wreckage there. I just, how do people enjoy this? I'm very curious. I'm, I'm very, very curious. Okay, you win. <laughs> <laughs> you have bored me to death, opponent. <laughs> Even though you have no win conditions. You have officially bored me to death. I quit. Alright. Uh, I mean, it was fun up until we got, you know, had to play against Blue White for five hours, but the rest of the league was fun, so I don't know. It was cool. Mm -mm. Well, I feel drained from watching that. <laughs> I, I cannot... Ah! There is no deck I hate more in Pioneer than Blue White. It is so miserable. <laughs> Anyways, uh, cards that I was not a fan of are the Feldins, the Abrades, and the Clothuses. We want to consider. We want to potentially add some copies of Mox Amber, Domri, Anarch of, or Anarchopolis. I think the three mana one that pumps your team, and then uh, Zenigos the Reveler. So some combination of those cards. Maybe you cut like two Feldin, two Abrade, two Clothus for like. Two Amber, three Dombri, and a Xenagos or something along those lines. Yeah, it clothed this did, but, like, we played against unplayable blue-black, and I think it's more of a sideboard card, whereas most of the time it's not going to be a good good main deck card. Like, Clothus is good against bad decks, right? So, in that case, it shouldn't really, I think, only be a sideboard card. To a league with blue-white? No, I'm good. No, so, uh, I guess Creator's Clause was kind of mid, too. 
But the idea behind this version is we're not doing combo stuff with Bergy and Mox Amber. We're more of just a mid-range deck, which is why you see no Ambers, no Bergies, stuff like that. Uh, but anyways, that was the Bard class deck. Thank you again to Spexus for submitting this. I had a great time, and I hope you did as well. Now, let's get to deck number two. This is, this is something alright. Something alright. Let me... 